Hello and welcome back everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, uh, this week we're going to start a new series about the security headers. I know in the last uh, topic we discussed about the security misconfiguration and one of the misconfiguration was about the missing out on the security headers which provides defense in depth. But it is more than like you know sort of like defense in depth but these are, these are some of the headers which are mandatory. Uh, which are easy to configure and which provides much more protection against such like you know such a huge attacks uh, you can call it as an injection attack cross site scripting man in the middle attacks etc so this week we're going to focus on two things uh, content security policy and the hsts which is called http strict transport security so let's start with the content security policy uh, now it the CSP header will help you detect and mitigate attacks such as XSS and injection attack. Now imagine uh, your application uh, would like you know have a connection or request from several other domains over the internet. Now where do you trust the content from? Like do you trust content from any different domains? Do you trust content from any other origin? No, that that shouldn't be true, right? Because uh, let's say uh, your website xyz.com is trusting content of abc.com which is vulnerable to some attacks. If the attacker is exploiting abc.com and injects some malicious code and which is inherited to xyz.com, now your website is vulnerable as well. And that is why, uh, like you know, browser should not trust. Uh, browser always trusts content, uh, and and even the developers, like you know, put the reference to the JavaScript from Google API or Facebook API, etc. Uh, to any third-party APIs, and that way, uh, vulnerability on, in those APIs may uh, make your website vulnerable. Uh, that's why content security policy, uh, as the name suggests, it's securing the content uh, is very, very vital. And to enable this header, the only need you you need to do is, like in the response header, uh, configure content security policy. So uh, how this typically works is, for example, let's say you got the request from example.com asset js file or js, and then the request was served uh, by that uh, CSS file, and then uh, it also sends you requests from like you know uh, malicious.com. If the content security policy uh, sets to example.com, it will not allow malicious.com to put the resource on your domain. And that is how it is very, very important because you do not trust this domain. You only trust example.com. And that is how it can protect against vulnerabilities such as XSS and injection attack. And here is the example how you should uh, configure the policy. So content security policy is the name of the header. Uh, script source itself. That means you are, you are uh, of course, uh, trusting your own domain. Then, uh, additionally, you are also trusting this other domain, which is, in this example, we are trusting cybersecuritytv.com. Now, what are the threats uh, that it, like, you know, provides the protection against? Uh, one of the things we talked about the XSS. So, how 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 it how it happens? So, XSS exploits the browser trust of the content received from the server, right? So whatever server receive, like you know uh, gives the content to the browser, browser trust and executes it. Now, as a system admin, you can control uh, like which source to trust. Now the source could be example.com, as we saw in the previous slide, or it could be a malicious domain.com. So you have all uh, uh, like you know all the control to trust uh, the source of the content. And then browser will only execute the scripts from the allowed domain. So it will not execute any XYZ script, any malicious script, attacker provided script. It will only trust the scripts from the domain that you trust. The other attack uh, that provides the protection against is the man in the middle. And how it happens is it provides, a, uh, like, you know, uh, as a system admin or as a, as, a, as a developer, you can also control which protocol uh, that we want to uh, restrict the traffic to. So you can say we only trust HTTPS. That way, none of the HTTP protocol or source will be uh, able to com make communication with your server. Uh, on top of that, you should also, like, you, of course, you don't just rely on the CSP for that. You also have to make sure you're using TLS and you also have to configure the secure flag on the cookies and then HSTS header, which we'll talk in the next slide. 
uh, and then redirect. Make sure you redirect traffic from HTTP to HTTPS. So these are the like you know potential uh, defense in depth mitigation that are provided by the CSP. The next one we're going to talk about is the HSTS, or also called the HTTP Strict Transport Security. Now this. Uh, this uh, restricts the web browser uh, to access the web server or HTTP. So let's say your website is available on HTTP and HTTPS, but if you have this header, uh, then it restricts the browser to connect over HTTP. And of course, like as we all know, it pro uh, provides the protection against MITM. And to enable this header, uh, you only need to configure uh, strict transport security in the response header. So how it typically works? So the request is httpdomain.com uh, the response will be httpsdomain.com so now the server automatically uh, sends the response in the HTTPS uh, the example how you configure this is provide the name of the header then the max age the max age is in the seconds so that the browser should remember that the site is only be accessed using HTTPS so if you if you know about the pre-flight request so when any request is made first time uh, to the domain from your browser, it's called a pre-flight pre request, and that let's say that happens in HTTP, and the response comes back from HTTPS. Along with that, in the response header, it will also set the max age. Let's assume this is somewhat about a month or a year. So for one year, every time uh, when the browser is connecting this domain, by default, connects over HTTPS. And after one year, it will fall back to HTTP. Again, makes a pre-flight pre request. It will connect to HTTP, and then uh, for next one year, it will connect the uh, like you know HTTPS. You can also set as never expire, so always connect the HTTPS. Now include subdomains. Uh, that means uh, this is optional parameter, but rule applies to all of the site subdomain as well. So abc dot example dot com or at inside dot uh, internal dot intranet dot abc dot com or or whatever the subdomains you have. And last uh, but not the least, the preload. This is very interesting. So uh, this was initially adopted by uh, Google, uh, but then I guess it's now adopted by many other browsers as well. So Google maintains a uh, preload HSTS preload service. So by following certain guidelines and uh, like you know, successfully submitting your domain, browser will never connect your domain using insecure connection. So not even a pre-flight request. So this is uh, you can uh, think uh, think of it as like you know, hard-coded list of domains uh, stored uh, in your browser. So whenever you are making a request to http://domain.com, uh, and if if the domain is hard-coded into the browser as an HSTS uh, preload service then by default browser will make a request over HTTPS. For that, your domain has to follow certain guidelines, submit the request or application to the Google. Once they accept, review your application, it will roll out, uh, it will include your domain into the list of services. So uh, as I said, like while the service is hosted by Google, all browser has started an intent to use. Uh, the preload list, however, it is not part of the HSTS specification and should not be treated as official. So this is not official, but uh, something, uh, of course, it's a great benefit. Uh, the threat mitigation, as we saw, like, you know, it protects against the MITM. Uh, one of them is protocol downgrade attacks. So, for example, let's say uh, you are using, like, you know, public Wi-Fi and, and trying to access your bank account. Uh, um, and your bank website is available over HTTP and they have not implemented HSTS. Now, the access point that you're using, uh, it's a public, so that might be an attacker access point or might be a legitimate access point or for a coffee shop. Now, what, what can go wrong is uh, because the uh, connection could be over HTTP, uh, a person or the access point, attacker's access point, can read through all the traffic, and now it can, uh, like, you know, redirect you to the fake bank website, which is cloned by the attacker. And you would assume that all the transactions are being happening on the your bank website, but it's actually happening on the attacker's website. And all of this is possible because 
uh, that the communication is over HTTP and and your uh, like you know the attacker uh, can intercept all the traffic in the plain text. Now uh, this could have been easily avoided uh, if uh, like you know uh, if the site is using street transfer security because as long as you have access your website bank's website once using HTTPS the bank's website using the strict transfer security your browser will know automatically transport all the first share communication only on HTTPS and then this will prevent from performing man in the middle so protocol downgrading is something where you would connect to HTTPS but then the man in the middle will uh, like downgrade from HTTPS to HTTP the other one is cookie hijacking. As we all know, uh, like you know, one can read the cookie session token and then they can replay the session token to perform action on behalf of the valid user. So uh, these are the threats we have, and these are the defense in depth. So the header HSTS can provide defense in depth against such attacks. Uh, so I guess that's it uh, in the first uh, part of this series. I didn't want to make it like long and and make you guys bored. Uh, but uh, hopefully, if you like it, uh, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and and let me know uh, if you would like me to continue discussing different headers. So the next session we will cover some more headers and some interesting uh, threat mitigation that it provides. Uh, that's it from now. Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.